Welcome to Crafty Beach. This is Julie. Today I put together 13 of my favorite coastal winter Dollar Tree DIYs because sometimes you want your decorations to be able to be out for the whole season and not just for Christmas. Now this first sign, I'm actually using a thrift flip sign. I thought this would be perfect. I had actually used it for another project and so I just go over it in some white just to kind of give myself a blank surface on that one and then I'm going to use one of these little snowflake wood signs from the Dollar Tree just patching the hole in top with a little spackle and then we're going to paint it. I wanted it to be a real soft blue so I mixed like half Caribbean blue half ivory together got this real icy blue color and simply going to paint this little snowflake. I liked this one because it's kind of solid. There's lots of area that I can make this look like a hand painted sign, something really fun for winter that you can leave up all winter, not just for Christmas. So that's kind of the theme of all of these. They're all gonna be kind of winter, but with a coastal spin. And so I'm just getting a good coat on there and I'm just gonna use white paint pen, like a Sharpie white paint pen and try my best to freehand this. I'm gonna try to do like a Ray Dunn font for these letters. And then I might mix it up a little bit here towards the bottom. But if you're not confident doing it, you know, freehand, you can always use your Cricut. But I thought this thing was so funny for this. Sand is the new snow. So I'm just gonna touch it up a little bit and make it look good. And then I'm gonna use some of these little wood snowflakes from the Dollar Tree to kind of decorate the snowflake a little bit further. Give it a little bit more fun touch. And I'm just using a makeup sponge and some white and simply painting those. And I'm just gonna attach those. I thought about doing a snowflake on each little point of the snowflake, but I decided less was more and I'm only gonna do four. One on the top, bottom, and both sides. And now I'm gonna add this thin Dollar Tree sign to this thrift flip sign that I just painted white. And I'm just gonna attach it with hot glue. And you could do this on any other kind of sign. You could do it from a Dollar Tree sign, a thrift flip sign, whatever you've got. But it's gonna make that Dollar Tree snowflake look way more high end and thicker. And then I thought it just needed a bow. So I'm gonna take some Dollar Tree burlap ribbon and cut it in half. And we're just gonna make a super simple X bow. Um, I got some of this ivory ribbon from the Dollar Tree. It's like a lace ribbon. And then some of this light blue ribbon from the Dollar Tree with the snowflake pattern on that. It's gonna go perfect with the sign, I think. And then we're just gonna cinch it all together with a zip tie. Easy peasy, I like an easy bow. And just secure that in the back. And then I can trim that off. And I'm gonna trim the ribbon a little bit too, to make it look a little bit better. Super cute. So I thought this would be cute kind of like on the side. So I'm gonna glue it to this one here, this part of the snowflake. And then I thought the final beachy touch on this would be really cute would be to add a sand dollar. Uh, these are the smaller ones I get on Amazon. They're available in my shop below. You could always use the larger ones from Dollar Tree. And this is how it turned out. I have this up again this year because I love it so much. Sand is the new snow. Perfect for a coastal winter, right? <laughs> Okay, are you ready for another Dollar Tree DIY? This is that snowman wreath form from the Dollar Tree. And we're just gonna give it a beachy makeover using some Dollar Tree rope. So this is the one that we are gonna use. It's the eight foot brown nautical rope. And we are, this project is so easy. We are just simply gonna line. It's got two um, 
wreath forms you see, one inside the other. And so we're just going to hot glue the rope on each one of those. So I'm gonna start it here at the neck. I think that's a good place to start um, seam wise. And then we're just gonna glue this all around the side. I'm working on a silicone mat and so that helps um, any of the hot glue that this isn't sticking to anything. It's gonna be easy to remove. So if you're not, be careful with this step. And just gluing it all around. I'm gonna go ahead and just continue this piece. Once I get to the top here, because you, as you can see, we're gonna have a little bit of overlap going on there anyway, when the head part of the snowman comes into play. And just gluing this all around and I can then cut it once I get to the top of this circle. And that took pretty much a whole package of that. And we're just gonna secure that with hot glue. You could also do this with the uh, white nautical rope from the Dollar Tree as well. I'm gonna kind of hot glue the end and kind of, you know, kind of blend that in more to the top. But I plan to add a scarf anyway, which is gonna kind of cover up some of that area. I've seen so many cute DIYs with these little snowman reef worms. I love all of them. I think they're so cute. I love snowmen. They've always been part of my winter decor for sure. And I love that you can leave them up like all the way to like Valentine's Day, right? And so we're doing the same thing here for the head of the snowman. Gonna do the outer one first. And once I get that all secure, I can go around on the inner one. If you had like a, a larger rope, you might not have to do two rows you might be able to do just one but with the Dollar Tree it definitely took two rows of this and there's our little nautical rope snowman and then we just need to decorate him a little more I'm gonna go ahead and use a lighter to burn off all the fuzzies here just to make it look a little bit nicer And I have this one hanging up this year. I absolutely love it. I think it's so fun. I wanted to uh, do the arms. And so I switched to the thinner uh, brown rope from the Dollar Tree for the arms. You'll see I actually end up adding to this, but it's fine as is. I'm just going to glue a piece, the length of it, and then glue two shorter pieces of rope, like for the little snowman hand. I end up adding um, coral to this which not really necessary, but I really liked the beachy touch you'll see here in a little bit. And if you didn't wanna do this part, you could always remove the arms and add some of the wire jute from the Dollar Tree. That would work really well too. But since the rope on this was pretty thick, it kinda of looks like the arms need to be kinda of thick as well. Now this is what we're gonna use for the hat and scarf. It's one of the light blue baby blankets from the Dollar Tree. I love working with this stuff. It's so easy to cut. It's like a felt, it's super soft, and it is the perfect beachy color. So I'm just gonna cut, um, I'm gonna double it up so you can't see that reform behind the fabric. And I'm just gonna cut a little rectangular piece that is the size of the hat. And you could always mix this up, whatever. I think burlap would look really cute too if you were using like the white rope for the snowman. And I'm just gonna kinda leave the seam part of the blanket on there and um, have that be the top part of the hat and it's gonna give me a nice finished edge. But again, this felt super easy to cut and it doesn't fray. Gets a little trickier right here because I kind of have to cut a little bit of an arc. And I get that trimmed down to size. So now we can just glue that on. I just put hot glue all over the wreath form and glue the baby blanket down. Now I also need to do a brim of the hat. So again, I'm just going to use that baby blanket and I am gonna go ahead and use the seam that's already on there. I'm gonna double it up like I did before so you can't see through it. Nice, thick piece of fabric and just cut off a little brim.
just trim that up to make sure that it looks perfect. And then we're just gonna attach that with hot glue. And we have a quick, easy little hat for our snowman reef. Now, I wanted to give it some beachy decor, so I'm giving it one of these little sand dollars I get on Amazon available in my shop, but you can always use the one from the Dollar Tree. It's a tiny bit bigger. And then I thought, you know, I have to use some of these little coral trees from the Dollar Tree for the arms. I just have to. So I'm just going to break off the end of the, you know, the trunk of the tree because um, I really think these look like coral. Now, I could have removed the arms and added these, but it probably wouldn't have been as strong. So I'm just going to add them to what I've already got. But again, this part's optional if you've already used all of your coral ornaments from making my coral wreath and my coral Christmas tree. I love both of those this year. They're so much fun. If you haven't seen those, you'll have to go check out those videos. I did both of those this year. So I'm just going to hot glue one ornament onto each side and we have little coral arms for our little coastal winter snowman. I think this is so fun and it was so easy to put together. Now the only thing I have left to make with this baby blanket is a scarf. So I'm just going to cut a strip again using the seam. Always using the seam to my advantage there. You get a straight line and just a simple strip. And then we're just going to wrap that around his neck like a scarf and just gluing that on so it stays in place. Now you can use this indoor or outdoor. Um, I use it indoor, but it would totally hold up outside as well, I think. The felt might get a little dirty depending on if you have a porch or not, but this is how it turned out. This is um, on the door to my garage. I think it's so fun. What do you think about our little coastal snowman? I love him. Okay, this project, I wanted to do a big sign to go in my entryway. Now I only could find one of the little snowflake long signs from the Dollar Tree, but that's okay. I still had two of the pumpkin ones left over from fall, but you know what? We are gonna make this work. I wanted to do a big, like let it snow sign um, by putting all three signs together, and that's going to allow me to make a really big project, but using supplies from the Dollar Tree. So I kind of line it up with the openings of the pumpkins down, the snowflake up, and then I'm just going to use some of these Dollar Tree rulers for braces on the back of the sign. And to put it all together. Then I was like, wait a minute, no, I don't want it like that. I'm going to cover up the pumpkin cutouts, of course. And I'm going to leave uh, the snowflake cut out. And so I'm trying to get it exactly the way I want it. And then I'm just going to put them all together with the ruler and some hot glue. Easy peasy. It's going to give us a great big sign. And I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing here on the other side using the flat side of that ruler. And while I'm back here, I'm going to go ahead and make a hanger out of some twine. And using the width of that wood um, and my stapler, I can just staple that on. Usually the staples go right through those Dollar Tree signs, but that made it thick enough. So this is how it looks right now. I have a snowflake sign um, over on the right there, you see. And we are just going to paint this a nice beachy blue. So I want to... It's all be the same color though. And I thought that if I painted that all the black would be way darker than the blue one, you know what I mean? So I'm going to go over it all with a coat of white first to give myself a blank canvas. I wanted to make a let it snow sign using one of these little wood let it snow signs from the Dollar Tree. Just filling in the hole on that with some spackle. And you know I don't want it to snow. I never want it to snow. So. I'm going to add to it. You'll see. <laughs> and I just want to paint this white because I'm going to do the big sign in like a light beachy blue. I love the white on blue for beachy signs and just using a makeup sponge and some white going all over and sponging that on makes it look nice and snowy. Easy peasy, and then we can go ahead and paint this sign. I am doing Caribbean blue, just acrylic paint, and I'm just going to go all over this big sign. The sign is so big, I can't get it all in my camera shot here on my workbench, but I'm just going to go ahead and work on half at a time here. <laughs>
And since I went in with that white coat first, the acrylic is covering pretty well. Now my plan is to cover up the pumpkin parts with some seashells and then leave the little snowflake part out. If you can find enough of the snowflakes ones, um, you wouldn't have to cover up the little pumpkins, of course. Now I kind of wanted to do a slight ombre effect, so I added some ivory to the Caribbean blue for this side, so we can kind of have that medium color of Caribbean blue fade into this really light color. The reason I'm doing that is because I'm doing both colors kind of today for these DIYs, and I want um, that to kind of coordinate together, so the largest piece um, is going to kind of have both. Then I mix both the colors together here in the middle and do a slight ombre um, effect so it'll change in color from the top to the bottom of the sign. And just blending that with a makeup sponge. Now we're going to go to Cricut Design Space and we're going to add to that Let It Snow because you know I can't have it Let It Snow, right? So this is how I do it. If you're not real familiar with Cricut Design Space, I always like to put like a rectangle or a square first. That is exactly the size that I need it to be, which I measured on the sign. And that way my word will fit perfectly. And we are just going to make a stencil. I love using my Cricut to make stencils. It's probably the number one thing I use my Cricut for. Um, if you don't have a Cricut, you could always do this with um, like the little letter stickers from the Dollar Tree. But this way I can do a nice custom somewhere else. Cause you know I don't want to let it snow, right? Then I delete the rectangle. And then I can go ahead and cut this out. This is going to be longer than your regular like 12 by 12 mat, but that's okay. I'm going to use my longer mat and some of the stencil vinyl that I get on Amazon. It's always linked below in my shop. My stencil vinyl and my paper transfer paper, you'll see me here use it in a minute. I love it. It's like the best that I've found. And I'm just going to simply weed that out. And this is the paper transfer paper. It comes in like a six inch roll and a 12 inch roll. I have both and I use both. I, mm, I might like the, I might use the six inch more, which is this one. And we're just going to attach that to our stencil. And I love my Cricut. I actually got my Cricut like two years ago, I guess now. Um, for my husband and son for Christmas. It is a wonderful Christmas present if you want any uh, gift ideas for yourself that you can hint to your family. A Cricut is definitely a great gift. So I'm going to go ahead and put that here on the bottom part of my sign and secure that down. And I'm just using a makeup sponge and some white paint and we're going to make it say somewhere else down here. And I really kind of like the spongy effect. It kind of makes it look a little bit more like snow. And I'm not too worried about bleeding because I always like that coastal beachy feel, especially on my hand painted signs. But I go over it with two coats to make sure that's nice and white against the blue. And we can peel off the stencil. Super fun. If you didn't want to do a hand painted sign, you could always cut it out of just Cricut vinyl and put the Cricut vinyl on there as well. Saves you a step. And then I'm just going to go through and weed out the rest of the vinyl. Sometimes I use Mod Podge first before I do the paint. That way if anything bleeds, it's the Mod Podge, but sometimes I have problems with that. Sometimes it kind of comes out kind of squirrely, but this worked pretty good. I'm also going to distress with some of that white and a chunky brush from the Dollar Tree and make it look nice and beachy. And then I'm just going to use a big seashell that I actually found at the beach to cover up this pumpkin down here. Just attaching it with hot glue and there's no pumpkin there anymore, right? <laughs> and then we can attach the Let It Snow sign from the Dollar Tree above the somewhere else just by adding hot glue to some of the letters. And this sign is so fun. I had to save it for again this year. I'm actually getting ready to hang it right now. I finally got my tree decorated. 
my tree stand was broken and I had to order a new one off Amazon. I had to wait for it to get here and now I'm like, oh my gosh, I got my tree up so late. I'm going to want to leave it up all January. It looks so beautiful. And then I'm covering the top pumpkin with the sand dollar you saw there. And then I thought maybe another seashell down here at the bottom would be cute too. Just gluing that on. Now I wanted to frame it because, you know, it's a thin Dollar Tree sign. I didn't want it to look thin. I wanted it to look framed out. So I'm going to use some of this white rope from the Dollar Tree. And we're just going to glue that all around the edges to give us a nice rope frame. This serves two purposes, you know. It gives you a frame, plus it totally adds to, like, the coastal beachy feel of the sign. And I'm not going to cut it at the corner. I'm just going to bend it and keep going all the way down the side of my sign. I'm sorry this project's so big. I couldn't really zoom out for this. And it goes around three sides there. I did cut it so it would be exactly the right length there because there was definitely not enough to go around the fourth side. So I will have to start another package of that white rope to finish off this last side. And that sand dollar is actually a real sand dollar. I get those on Amazon as well. Those are the larger ones that are available in my shop. But I'm, I'm thinking the ones from the Dollar Tree might be big enough. Last year when I made this project, I don't think I had any of those left. Now, these are some of the little snowflakes, the wood snowflakes from the Dollar Tree. And I thought it needed a few more snowflakes. So I'm just going to go ahead and paint two of those white to add to our side. And again, the makeup sponge is key. I just finally found some more of those at the Dollar Tree. I was so excited because I was running low. And we're just going to attach those. So we're going to have seashells and snow on this sign. I think it'll be really cute. Kind of one on each side of our sand dollar. And this is how it turned out. It's really big. Let it snow somewhere else. I think it looks so beachy and I love it. I love this saying. So if you don't want to let it snow, you can let it snow somewhere else, too. It doesn't matter where you live, as long as you're beachy at heart, right? Okay, our next DIY is super easy. I got this um, sign, half price at the Dollar Tree. It looks like somebody's craft project never got completed. And we are just going to paint this um, the Caribbean blue. So you could use a Dollar Tree sign for this. You could use a thrift flip sign, something you've already got, whatever. I liked this one because it was slatted. That always kind of gives me a, a beachy vibe. I like that. A little palette sign. And we're just going to go over the whole thing with Caribbean blue acrylic paint. And then I want to do just another blue with white because I really like that for winter and for beach or coastal DIYs. And so I want to do a white snowflake on top of this. This DIY is going to be super easy. Now, once I get it painted blue, I do want it to look distressed. So I go over it with ivory and a chunky brush from the Dollar Tree and then wipe off any excess with just a baby wipe to give me that nice coastal feel. And then I'm going to use one of these snowflakes from the Dollar Tree. This is the MDF one. Just fill in the hole from the hanger with some spackle and we can paint this. Now, I want to kind of take advantage of the fact that it's already brown. So I'm going to do ivory, but as you can see, I'm going to distress it where... It's going to be mostly ivory, but I definitely want some of that brown to show through. That way I don't have to go back and distress it for the coastal rustic feel. So I kind of just keep adding to it until I get the right color of white that I want. And I think this is going to look really pretty um, um, on the blue sign that we painted. And it's the perfect size. Now this is the other wood snowflake, you know, from the Dollar Tree. This has got all the cutouts, so it's very intricate. And we're just going to attach that to the sign with some hot glue on the back. Now, I did want to give it a little bit more of a beachy vibe. We've got our beachy colors and our coastal distressing, but I thought the perfect final touch would be one of these little starfish from the Dollar Tree, just glued right to the middle of our snowflake. A little unexpected touch, but super cute, and it goes well with it. And this is how it turned out, our little coastal snowflake sign. Our second one that we did. Now this I did the Caribbean blue. The other one I did in that softer color because I mixed it half and half the Caribbean blue with the um, ivory. 
Hey guys, I have a private Facebook group if you haven't joined. I have the link below. Um, you'll keep, um, I'll keep you updated on all of my videos and you get to see what everybody else is working on. I'm also really active on Instagram, TikTok, and Pinterest. And I'm Crafty Beach on YouTube on all three of those. Okay, you guys ready for a wreath? I'm gonna use just one of these um, gold wire wreath forms from the Dollar Tree and some of these microfiber um, mop heads from the Dollar Tree. I think they look fun and snowy for winter. And this, you know, you could use like a thicker wreath for them like the foam one, but I kind of wanted this to be larger, so I'm using just the single gold one. But you could also use the one that, you know, the wire one that's thicker, because um, this does turn out very lightweight, uh, which could be good if you want like a lightweight wreath for your door. I use this indoor just hanging on my wall, so I, of course I want it to be nice and light. But I just take it and fold the little mop head over and glue it to itself. And it covers quite a bit um, of the wreath form, as you can see there. Then I'm going to go with a second mop head and do the same thing. I'm going to kind of, um, you know, work with it so it looks round at the end and not like a square. Because it's kind of looking like a square so far, right? <laughs> But just kind of working it together and spacing it out. What we want to do is I want to make this look like a coastal winter, like life buoy or life ring. Because, um, you know, I think that's a really fun thing to hang on the wall for like coastal decor. But I wanted it to look like snow. So that's why I'm using these mop heads. And four of them work perfectly to cover this wreath form. So I got it all together. Now to do the little strap parts on the life buoy, I'm gonna use some of this wired burlap from the Dollar Tree. And we're just gonna go ahead and cut out four pieces. And that's gonna cover the four seams between all the different mop heads and uh, make it look way more finished. And just gluing that to the back and gluing that around, super easy. Making a life buoy like this or a life ring is super fun. And I love it for a reef. It's just perfect for coastal decor. Gonna do the same thing here on the second side. And I really liked the fact that I didn't have to cut the mop heads because these can be really messy when you start cutting them. The fibers all start coming out, but if you don't cut them like this, then you're not gonna have any mess. And I'm just gonna keep doing that all the way around, just hot gluing it to itself on the back. And that's gonna secure it. I'm only gluing it down on the back because I need to have the rest of it a little bit loose so that I can add to the ropes and stuff to this. At the end, I guess you could do that at the beginning, but I'm gonna go ahead and fish it through after I get all four of these secure. And then to make sure it's not going anywhere, I do cut another little piece of the burlap just to secure it on the back. And then I'm just using some Dollar Tree white rope. And I'm gonna start the first one by gluing it under the ribbon. And then I'm gonna just kind of feed it through all of the rest of them. Leaving a little bit extra. That would be the rope on the side of the life ring. What do you guys call these? I know they're called life buoys. I know they're called life rings. I think I always called them like life preservers. I don't know. <laughs> Comment below. And I go all the way around. This rope was a scrap piece of rope. It wasn't quite long enough, but we're going to make it work. Now, I didn't like the fact that it was, you know, kind of like laying up against it. You couldn't really see it. So I'm going to actually wire, wire the back of it with just some of this wire jute just to make it where I can um, bend it and mold it and make it kind of stick out where you can see it. If your rope was a little bit longer than my piece, you might not have to do this step. But I'm just going to go around and do that just to make it a little bit more sturdy. I, I thought that you really couldn't see the rope. So I'm just gonna feed it through all of the ribbon like I did before and just attach it to the back of the rope with hot glue. You're not gonna be able to see it. 
and the final product. Okay, it's looking really good. I thought it needed a little bit of color, so I'm gonna use some of this blue ribbon from the Dollar Tree that has the little white snowflakes on it that I used on our Sand is a New Snow sign. And I'm just gonna cut one for each of the little burlap ribbons, and we are just going to glue that on the same way we did the ribbon. It's gonna add a little bit of blue to this DIY and really tie it all in together. And this was so easy. This would look great. Um, even if you had like a lake house or something like that, this would be a great coastal winter DIY. And the great thing about all these projects is that you can leave these up all winter. You don't have to take them down when Christmas is over. And here it is, our final product. It looks really fun hanging on my wall. I have brown walls so that white really pops and it looks great for winter. I love this DIY. Okay, you ready for another snowman? I told you I love snowman. I got this little tinsel snowman from the Dollar Tree. I'm just going to take it apart and then I'm going to remove all of this tinsel because I can't stand it. And I wanna make a coastal snowman. This one's gonna be a lot different than the reform that we made before though. This one's probably my favorite. Oh man, I really love how this one turned out. So I took all three parts apart and as you can see, I'm just removing all the ribbon, all of the tinsel, even the eyes and the hat. And then we are gonna use some of this white nautical rope, the six foot. You could probably use um, the longer one as well. You're just gonna have to wrap it around a little bit more, but I wanna cover all the snowman with it, starting in the center of each segment. So I just hot glue that to the center. And then we are just gonna spiral that around to make a big circle of rope for this part of the snowman, it turned out really well. And just kinda kinda snake that around. If I do have some cage, I do glue that to it, as you can see. Otherwise, I'm just wrapping it in a circle until it's gonna be large enough to cover all of that plastic cage. And I, I love the way this looks. I think it's so pretty. This would actually be really cute on a door as well. I actually have it hanging in my entryway. I kind of have like a um, wall that kind of, how do I explain it? It's kind of a diagonal wall and it like looks perfectly there. Again, against my brown wall. Now you can kind of see these tabs on the side. So I'm just going to trim those off. I don't want you to be able to see anything except for rope. So that was the largest segment. That's like the bottom of the snowman. This part is gonna be the middle part of the snowman. And I kind of have to be creative where I start gluing that down because it didn't really have a center. But again, just gluing wherever I have the cage. I'm not really gluing it to itself. I'm just kind of gluing it down to the cage. And then just again, trimming off all of those little peg pieces that were sticking out that were holding the tinsel on there before. But leaving the little hooks on there because I wanna be able to hook it back together. Now for the head, we're gonna do kind of the same thing. We don't have a full circle, but we do have like a center part here where I can start with the spiral. And again, just gluing it to the cage. I had so much fun decorating this. It turns out so cute. And trying to keep this as symmetrical as I can because I did kind of have to start not exactly on the center there. But kind of hide this part up underneath the hat. And again, I'm going to use some of that baby blanket from the Dollar Tree, um, the little baby blue blanket. I love this. And I'm just gonna cut out a little piece for the hat, double layer it up, use the seam for the top, just like I did on the snowman wreath form.
Easy peasy. And just attaching that with hot glue, overlapping a little bit of the snowman's head. And then again, I'm gonna use just the seam part and cut a strip, double it up, and make a brim for the hat. It's super easy to cut and does not fray, but you do have to make sure that you get it even there. Glue it to itself, and then I can glue the top part of the hat on here. And if you didn't wanna do blue, you know, this would look really cute with burlap or black even, a traditional snowman hat. All right, now it's time to think about decorating the face. I'm gonna use seashells. So I got some of these little teeny tiny seashells from the Dollar Tree. I used um, two bigger ones for the eyes and then five tiny ones for the mouth of the snowman. And my favorite is I used one of the little spiral seashells from the Dollar Tree for the nose sticking out. It looks just like a carrot. If you wanted these to be, you know, colored, you could always paint them as well. I kind of wanted the authentic shell feel, so I'm just kind of leaving them all natural. I did kind of pick out kind of matching colors, though, to themselves. And then for the little buttons to go down the front of the snowman, I thought I would just go ahead and use some seashells as well. And I'm going to go all the way down just for fun. Now I gotta just put it back together. I left the little hooks on here so that I could hook it back together. That part's important when you start trimming it is that you leave that intact. And then I'm just gonna use some twine to make a new hanger for the little circle that I left on the top as well. Then it's gonna need a little scarf for our snowman as well. So I'm just gonna cut a strip like I did before. I'm on the snowman wreath for a quick little scarf. And we're just gonna kind of tie that around his neck. He kind of has a skinny neck, but that's okay. We can kind of make it work. So cute. Isn't he lovely? I love him. Now for, he's gonna need some snowman arms. So I'm gonna use some of this wired to from the Dollar Tree and cut two long pieces for arms and two shorter pieces for hands. Just twisting those around. You gotta kinda be careful that twine likes to come off the wire. I always cut mine a little longer if I need to work with it a little bit because I know I'm probably gonna have to trim it down. Then I'm just gonna attach the arms with hot glue onto the back of this rope part of the snowman. And that's all there is to it. We have a coastal rope snowman for winter. I think he's so sweet. I think the shell from the nose is my absolute favorite. What do you guys think about this guy? So cute. Hey guys, if you're enjoying today's video, be sure to hit that like button. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, I would really appreciate it. We're trying to get to 30,000 subscribers. Now this next DIY is I got one of these little let it snow sled signs from the Dollar Tree. And I'm just gonna go ahead and paint over the sled part um, cause I kinda wanna do my own thing there. I'm gonna leave the let it snow on there even though you know I don't want it to snow. <laughs> but I used this Caribbean blue paint. It really kind of matched the color that was on the let it snow part. And kinda going over enough times to cover up the pattern that was on there. Now I kind of wanted to make it look like sand on the bottom. I'm just using some chalk paint. I think this was the color cashew and I'm just gonna kind of make that look, you know, kind of all beachy like here at the bottom. <laughs> Lots of curves. You could also glue on sand. That would be really cute for this. I kind of wish that I had when I was looking at it. And I kind of want to do a snowman on there like it was before, but I want to do like a beachy snowman. I'm going to kind of, you know, just do a little ivory here, a little sea foam, kind of do some white caps because this is going to be my ocean scene if you catch my drift. 
going to make this sled our own for coastal winter. And I made this for the side of my cabinets in my kitchen. I think it turned out really fun. Of course, with my ocean, I kind of want some different shades of blue. So I do like just kind of pick some different colors that I had. I think this is lagoon maybe. And just doing some little bit of different shading in the ocean. No big deal. And then I got one of these little wood snowmen from the Dollar Tree. And I thought that could be our snowman. So I'm going to go all over him with just some ivory paint. And then wipe off the excess paint because I still kind of want to see the details of the snowman down there. So that I can decorate this guy. I'm going to attach him to our sled with a little hot glue. Kind of like sitting on the beach. Adding some waves. <laughs> And kind of distressing him a little bit too. I want him to kind of look like a coastal beachy snowman for this little sled. Now I'm just going to use some paint pens and we can kind of decorate this little guy. You can kind of see, uh, you know, the print that was below there with all the details, like the little scarf I'm going to do in this like soft minty green. And I'm also going to do the hat in that color as well to make him look nice and coastal. I love staining or painting these little wood signs from the Dollar Tree. Um, I always throw away the markers if they come with them and just kind of do my own thing. And I'm just going to use a blue marker to draw on the eyes, the mouth, the buttons. He's holding a little bird in his hand, which we can have a little blue, you know, shore bird, right? <laughs> Kind of color him in. And I'm going to do an orange sharpie for the little carrot nose. And then I thought I kind of needed to outline him. So I'm just using a blue uh, permanent marker. I think I got this at the Dollar Tree. And I am going all around the edges where I can still see the details of the snowman and kind of coloring that back in. I'm going to distress that bird a little bit to make it look a little bit beachier. And kind of outline him in that like softer blue color. I'm also going to distress where it says let it snow to kind of make it, you know, vibe more with everything else. And you know I don't want it to let it snow, right? So I'm just going to use a, I'm, I, this is a white chalk marker from the Dollar Tree. I tried that first. Um, just because I kind of wanted, you know, a really light, powdery looking. And I just freehand that on in cursive somewhere else. I didn't think it was enough though, so I am going over it with a white paint pen. But that gave me a nice starting place to start with. And just freehand that on there. Easy peasy. That was kind of cursive on the top, so it kind of goes together. And being a perfectionist, I'm going over it one more time until I'm totally happy with it. I know I've got some other perfectionists out there. It's one reason I probably don't sell my crafts is because I don't think a craft would ever be perfect enough for me to want to sell it to somebody because I would think that, oh, you know, I messed up that little tiny bit there. But when I make stuff for myself or my, my friends and family, I don't really mind. So I just sealed that on there. I'm going to go over um, the wood part of the sleigh too and just distress that a little bit to make it look a little bit more coastal with just a lighter color of brown. Just to lighten that up a little bit. And as you can see, I left the hanger on there so I don't really need to replace that at all. And it wasn't in my way. And then since it's at the beach, I thought, you know, we have to have some seashells. So I'm just going to use some seashells from the Dollar Tree. Just trying to pick out what I think is going to look good, some different colors and variety, and we're just going to attach those to the sled with some hot glue. This was a really fun DIY to put together. It's not super professional. If you wanted it to be a little bit more professional, you could use your Cricut um, to make some vinyl for somewhere else or to make a stencil, but I was just having some fun with this project for real. 
kind of distressing it a little bit more. And there it is, our little let it snow somewhere else. I thought a bow would be cute here at the top, so I'm using some of that Dollar Tree Snowflake ribbon. And I'm just going to tie a simple bow up here, just for another little dose of blue and a few snowflakes to go with the Let It Snow theme. Because we've added a lot of beach to it. <laughs> and this is how it turned out. This is how it looks on the side of my kitchen cabinet. Super whimsical and fun. Again, not wanting any snow here. No thank you. Okay guys, I wanted to take a quick moment out of today's video and let you know about memberships here on my channel. For $4.99 a month, you can support me here at Crafty Beach on YouTube and you're going to get early ad-free access to my videos and it's a quick easy way to support my channel. All you have to do is hit the join button underneath this YouTube video. So the first one, we're going to start with one of these little wood rounds from the Dollar Tree and I wanted to try to see if I could make coral snowflakes. I know we have made coral, a coral wreath and a coral Christmas tree. And so I thought we would try snowflakes this time. This is the color I'm going to use. It is Caribbean blue. I just wanted something beachy and blue. And I really almost kind of want to stain this wood round instead of painting it. So I'm just going to put a really thin coat of this acrylic blue all over. And then before it dries, I'm going to try wiping a lot of it off with a baby wipe. That way I can get some of the wood grain to show through. And um, it kind of adds to the coastal beachy look, I always think. Just want it to look a little bit tinted, less painted. I don't know if you can see that, but there's a really pretty wood grain in that wood. And now let's start building a coral snowflake. These are the little tree ornaments from the Dollar Tree. I love these. I always try to stock up on these whenever I see them. Kind of use them year round because I really think they look like coral. Um, and so we are going to make an eight pointed, I guess, snowflake for the first one, which is a lot of points. But, you know, each snowflake's a little bit different. So this one's going to be um, have a lot of different coral pieces sticking out. Now to make it look like coral, I just like to pop off the little trunk and I used to cut these off, but I have found that it's made out of plastic. It's just easier just to pop them off. So I'm going to do that on all eight of them. And that's really the only modification I'm going to do on them. They're white. They have glitter all over them. They're super pretty. And so I'm just going to go ahead and reuse the hanger that came with the wood round. I stocked up on these wood rounds. I got a whole case on DollarTree.com, so I don't have to worry about finding them. I love them. And I'm going to start mapping this out. So north, south, east, west, and then we're going to put one in between each one. And then this one's going to be a full one. We're going to do two different varieties of these today. And they are a little bit more 3D on one side than the other side, the ornament. So you're going to want to make sure that you have them all go the same way. And then to tie it all together for the center of the snowflake, I thought a sand dollar from the Dollar Tree would be perfect. You could use really anything that was circular, but I thought that was just screaming for a sand dollar, right? And so let's start attaching these. Um, I'm going to use the flatter side down. I first attempt to glue it on both ends, but it's kind of um, shaped in a way where it's better just to glue the tip where the little hanger is down. And it kind of like makes it stick out a little bit, which is fine, it actually adds to it, but uh, make sure that your glue gets dry before you let go of it because they kind of wanna come off and really this is the only thing securing it down at this point. So I'm going to do that to all eight of them. I'm almost going to the edge, pretty close to the edge with all of these. But I also have it where I want to cover up all those holes in the little coral ornaments um, with the sand dollar. So I want to make sure those are kind of tight in there. Now the sand dollar from the Dollar Tree, they're really cute. They're plastic. They're not real, but they're kind of a grayish tint for some reason. So I'm going to paint this a nice snowy white to kind of coordinate with that coral. Just by doing a couple of thin coats of white acrylic, just making sure if you get any in the little holes that you um, 
clean up any drips in there. I almost wanted it to be like white sparkly um, glitter like the ornaments, but I didn't have any glitter. So I'm going to improvise with some glossy Mod Podge and just make it shiny and white. That'll kind of make it go well. Just to kind of make it match the coral. And my first idea was to do this without like the wood round behind it. And I'm sure you could do it. I just thought it might be sturdier this way. And then I could do a punch of color behind the snowflake. But I'm curious if any of you guys make this without the wood round behind it. You just connect the ornaments to the sand dollar. Oh, please post it in my Facebook group. I would love to see it. And even if you make these, I want to see them in my Facebook group. Please show me. I love to see your all's different takes on my DIYs. Now, my first attempt is just to put a little glue on each one of the hangers. But the, that did not really line up very well with the sand dollar. Um, it really wasn't glued on there. So I'm going to do hot glue all around the edges of it where it kind of sits down more. And then sit that on there, and that worked. <laughs> and there it is. We have a little snowflake made out of coral. I think it's so fun. I thought the hanger was a little boring and it needed something. So I'm going to use some of this um, ribbon from the Dollar Tree. I think it kind of looks like fishing net. And I'm just going to take a little piece of it that I had left over from another DIY and just tie that onto the hanger with some twine. And that's it, basically. I'm going to cut off the excess twine and just have that kind of hang down on each side of the hanger. I thought it just added a little something, a little something coastal and nautical to our little snowflake. And I love how this one turned out. I was thinking if you did a whole bunch of these, you could have them like snowflakes falling down your wall. It'd be really cute. But this is how it looks on the side of my cabinet in my kitchen. I think it's so pretty. Okay, so let's try a different variety. I thought I really loved that one, but I wanted to try like a different size, different shape ornament um, with different colors to see what, see if we like this one better. So again, I'm using one of those wood rounds from the Dollar Tree and we're just going to pop the hanger off. For this one, I wanted to stain it. Um, I'm going to use Antique Wax by Waverly, but I don't want it to be too dark. I kind of want it to look more like driftwood. So where I'm going to mix like Antique Wax by Waverly with some water to kind of give myself a more thin stain. And i um, going to go all over the wood round with that with just a thin coat of that. Just kind of working quickly because I don't want it to dry. Once I get it all on there, I'm going to wipe off all of the excess anti wax by Waverly with a baby wipe and hopefully we'll have a very light stain here. Now this did make the board really wet because I watered it down, of course. Um, so I did have to dry this for a little bit, but look at that beautiful wood grain and that Dollar Tree sign. Sweet. I love it. And you could distress it a little bit more if you wanted it to look a little bit more coastal beachy driftwood. But I kind of wanted to see what the snowflake would look like on like a wood background. So again, we're just going to reattach the hanger that came with the wood round. I love these. They're so ready to work with. And then for this one, we're going to use the same ornaments, the little tree ornaments. But this time we're going to do a six sided a snowflake to see how that looks. Again, I'm just popping off the little trunks on all six ornaments and we can start lining this one up. I got the idea to do the different ornament, uh, the different like six and eight because like the MDF snowflakes from the Dollar Tree that I have are different. There's like a six one, there's like an eight one. So this one's not quite as busy. It's a different shape, but I like it. I think it's going to look cool. So just kind of figuring out where everything needs to be on here. And then we can put this little snowflake together as well. Again, the little sand dollar from the Dollar Tree, a little bit gray. So we're just going to paint that one again. I'm going to do the same exact thing that I did on the first one. I'm going to do a couple coats of white acrylic. And then we're going to finish it off with some glossy Mod Podge to make it sparkle. Hey guys, I would love to thank you guys for being here today and watching this video. I appreciate y'all so much. And don't forget to hit that like button. And when you're done watching, comment your favorite DIY below. I did not number them today, but 
I'm sure you can remember what your favorites are. I would love to hear it. Or you can just come say hi. I love reading all your all's comments below. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. We are trying to get to 11,000 subscribers by the end of the year. I think we can do it. So again, I just glued all of those little ornaments down in the middle using the hanger part. And then gluing all around the edges of the sand dollar. We are going to glue that one down as well. And I can't decide which one I like better. Which one do you guys like better? The eight sided on the blue or the six sided on the wood? I think they're both beautiful in their own way. I can't really decide. Um, in the hanger again, I think it's kind of boring. So I'm going to do the same thing that I did on the first one. I'm just going to take some of that ribbon from the Dollar Tree that kind of looks like fishnet. And we're just going to simply tie that to the top with some twine. I have these hanging together right now on the side of my cabinet. But I think that I will um, move them around. Um, kind of see where I want. I don't really want this one to be on my walls because my walls are brown. I think it'll kind of blend in. Well, maybe that would be cool though. But this is how this one turned out. Our little wood coral snowflake. I love the idea of the coral snowflake. I think it's so fun. Okay, next DIY. I wanted to make some fun little stocking hats is what I call them. I think a lot of people call them beanies, um, little winter hats, but I wanted to do it with like a coastal feel. So using one of these wood ovals that I got at the Crafter Square at Dollar Tree, I am just going to measure half and what I'm going to do is just cut it in half with my saw. That way I have two of them and I think they kind of look like a, you know, a beanie shape. So we're going to make a couple of little stocking hats. Now these are the little microfiber washcloths from the Dollar Tree. They're this beautiful like minty green blue color. I think that's really coastal and beachy looking and they're nice and fuzzy. They're that microfiber. I thought we could cover one of these with that to be the stocking hat material. And they fit, like this little shape fits nicely, like in just one quarter. I'm just going to use a chalk marker um, to kind of draw that on there so I'll know where to cut. And I kind of want to cut it a little bit bigger than it so that I can wrap the sides around. Um, it's not a very thick piece, but there are a little bit of sides on that little wood block. So I just cut that out. I kind of want to do the fuzzy side up on this one to make it look super cozy. And I'm going to go ahead and cut off the bottom as well. And I do plan to do like a little, um, the brim of the hat. Um, is that what it's called with stocking hats? I'm not sure. But I'm going to go through and do Mod Podge, just regular matte Mod Podge. I do two layers because I want it to be nice and thick so it'll stick to this material. I did not want to use hot glue because I didn't want the hot glue to soak through the fabric and be visible in the final project. So I got, got it glued to the front and now I'm just going to glue it around to the sides. And it doesn't have to be perfect, but like from the sides and the top, I want it to kind of look like it is covered with that fabric as well. I saw so many cute ideas for these, but I thought we could do our own spin on these and try to make a coastal version. So that's why I'm using these coastal colors. Now this is a bath mat from the Dollar Tree, but I thought this like tan shaggy material might be good for a hat. And so I am just going to kind of measure out a little strip of it for the brim of the little stocking hat like that. And I just have to cut out a little strip. So I'm not going to measure. I'm just kind of eyeballing it about how big of a strip I would want. And just cutting that out. It does shed a little bit when you cut it, so just get any of the loose pieces off. And I'm going to kind of do the seam on the bottom where you won't be able to see it, because I want it to look shaggy, and cut that down to size. Now this is nice and thick. I think I can glue this on with hot glue without any of that glue coming through and be vis visible on the final project. So I glue that down. I glue the bottom to the bottom of the stocking hat. And then I'm going to glue the sides, just trimming them up a little bit. 
and that one was already glued down so we are good to go on that now I wanted to decorate it with something coastal. So I thought I would use, these are those little um, craft board cutouts from the Crafter Square at the Dollar Tree. And I picked out some ocean ones here. Um, I think I'm gonna do a sea turtle on this one. These are not made out of wood. They're made out of like, it's kind of like a cardboard material. And I think that's gonna be really cute on there with one of these little pom-poms for the top. So I kind of want to go with a blue and white theme. So I'm just using a makeup sponge and carefully painting that little sea turtle white. They are and not really, you know, made out of wood. So you kind of have to be careful when you're painting them. They are delicate and I don't want this to fall apart. So I got that painted white and the little pom-pom, um, I'm going to put that on the top. And that's just something I had left over from the Target Dollar Spot. You could always make your own out of yarn. I actually got some pom-pom makers at the Dollar Tree the other day. I need to try them out. I'm just going to cut the yarn hanger that was off on there. And then we can start putting this little guy together. So the first thing I'm going to do is just hot glue the little sea turtle just kind of over here on the left. I thought that would be a cute little touch. And then I want it to stand up, so I'm gonna use two of those little Jenga blocks from the Dollar Tree and just glue those together and then glue that to the back. This would be really cute on your shelf, on a tear tray, so many uses for these. And then I'm gonna glue the pom-pom to the top with just some hot glue and then sticking that down on there. I think this looks so cozy and cute. I love the subtle coastal vibes with the sea turtle and the beachy colors. I think it's so pretty. And this is how it turned out. You can see that microfiber material looks nice and fuzzy. And so does the bath mat material. I think it's really fun. Okay, so we have the second half. So let's try to make another one. This one I thought we could use some of this white nautical rope from the Dollar Tree and um, wrap it around like a rope one, but I want like a thin rope. So what I'm gonna do is separate this into thirds. We end up using um, like one and a half of the three pieces once I get it unwound. And this is like the six foot rope, I think. I'm gonna start at the top with just a little dot of hot glue and put one of those strands of rope on there. It's a little curly, um, but it's okay. We're gonna wind it around. It's gonna kind of straighten it out a little bit. So hot glue just on the first round to get it started. And then the first row, and then just, we're gonna just wrap this around. I'm just trying to kind of push and wrap it as tightly as I can. Kind of give like a, wrap, a rope wrapped look there. <laughs> Unfortunately, my rope was not long enough. And so I'm gonna glue that to the back and then I'm just gonna have to start a new one. And that's gonna be on the back so it won't be real visible anyway. And I'm just gonna work around a little bit more. I'm not gonna go all the way down though. I'm gonna go to right about there and then hot glue that to the back after trimming it. Now again, we're gonna use some more of those microfiber washcloths. This time, I thought I would use it for the brim of the hat. That way, both the hats are gonna to coordinate together really well. I can display them um, together and they're gonna look nice together. But I'm gonna cut out a bigger piece than I need because this is a lot thinner than the bath mat. So I thought we could like quadruple it up maybe. So I'm just cutting uh, like a little rectangular size, cutting the seams off both sides. I'm gonna leave the seam on one side, that's fine. And then I'm just gonna fold it, fold it, fold it until I get a nice a thick piece of fuzzy microfiber for the hat. And then I'm gonna hot glue it together. I've got so many layers, you're not gonna be able to see that through it. And then I'm gonna hot glue that on to our little rope hat. I can't decide which one I like on these either. I love them both, they're so cute. I think they're really cute together. And then I'm just gonna glue the sides to themselves and then to the hat. And again, I thought we use one of these little sea creature craft board. This time I'm gonna use the little um, seahorse one. I think he's so cute. 
Now be careful before you glue them on. Sometimes you have to pop out some of the pieces that are still in there. I'm gonna kind of hot glue him over to the side. Not gonna paint him, I'm gonna leave him that nice brown color. I think it's gonna be a cute contrast to the hat. And then again, I'm gonna use two of the Jenga blocks. This one I'm gonna have to attach a little bit differently. Um, to the back, I'm just gonna glue them kind of end to end. And then glue that on to the wood on the back of the beanie. I kind of like calling them a beanie, but we usually call them stocking hats in our house. My son just actually had to buy one when we were going to West Virginia because we had nothing. We were going to be frozen. <laughs> so again, I have another one of those pom-poms um, from the Target Dollar Spot, and we're going to hot glue that to the top of our little stocking hat. I think these look so coastal and fun. I love the little be beachy touches as well. The little sea creatures are so cute. Isn't it adorable? And I really like how the rope turned out. I think it looks really nice for a coastal touch. And it kind of looks like, you know, like a sweater material. And this is the final result. Our little seahorse beanie. So we've got made two snowflakes out of coral. We've made two beanies, but we've got lots more coming up. Okay, our next DIY, I thought we'd use some of these adorable little wood ice skates from the Dollar Tree. You get two together and um, just make a cute little winter sign. I'm going to use one of those little galvanized metal signs from the Crafter Square at Dollar Tree. It's kind of like the slatted design and I thought we could do something cute with this. Something that's going to coordinate with the little stocking hats that we just made. So I don't really have to do anything to that metal background. It is good and ready to go. But I thought we could like kind of layer up the little ice skates kind of like that. They have the design where they're kind of like um, on opposite sides. But that's okay. We're going to do our own thing on these anyway. So I'm just going to use heat and a putty knife and just pop off that snowflake on there because it's kind of in my way on this one. The other one I'm not going to worry about. I'm just going to leave it there. I thought about drilling holes in there to do laces, but I decided that might be a little much. Again, we're going to use one of those microfiber washcloths from the Dollar Tree. It's going to make this tie in well with the other two DIYs we just used with this. And we're going to cover the skate material with that. Now for the blades and the bottom of the skates, I kind of just wanted them to be stained. I thought about doing silver, but I kind of liked the rusty feel of the brown. So we're just going to use some Antique Wax by Waverly and then wipe off the excess with a baby wipe. It's going to give us that nice light stain. I think it's going to go well with the different colors that we're using on these DIYs. So my plan is just to cover the skates with this material. So I am just going to use an ink pen. I couldn't find my chalk marker. I don't know what I just did with it. And I'm just going to kind of draw on where the boot would be. Just enough where I can cut that out. Now I'm going to double that up so I can go ahead and cut both at the same time. Now doing it this way by folding it, you're going to get two different textures. One's going to be the back of the washcloth and one's going to be the front. So one's going to be fuzzy and one's going to be not. If you want both of yours to be the same, then don't fold them <laughs> like I did. I didn't really realize I was doing that, but I kind of liked the final effect. So I went ahead and went with it. So this one is like the fuzzy one. And then the one that's going to be on the inside is not so fuzzy. That's when I realized, girl, what did you do? <laughs> but we're going to make it work. So I did a pretty good job of cutting it out. It fits on there pretty good. I'm just going to trim it up a little bit and then trim off the top. Now I'm going to attach it with Mod Podge, just doing a nice thick layer of Mod Podge over the skate part and gluing that on. It's pretty forgiving. You kind of stretch it out if you cut it a little bit too short. And then I'm going to trim it to uh, right underneath the little cuff on the top of the ice skate. Now we're going to do the same thing on this one, except this one's going to look nice and fuzzy. I thought about redoing that, making them both fuzzy, but 
It's always fun to have a little bit of variety in textures when you're working with a DIY, I think. So I just glued that one down as well. I'm using Mod Podge instead of hot glue again because I don't want any of the glue to come through and damage that microfiber. It works well for fabrics. Now for the top, I thought we could use that bath mat again from the Dollar Tree. We're getting lots of use out of this today to make um, little fuzzies for the top of the ice skate. So I just cut out a little piece. And then I'm going to cut out two little strips, one for each ice skate. That's going to help it coordinate well with the stocking hats as well because it has the same kind of material and the same colors. I'm going to go ahead and cover up the, the holes on the top because I'm not going to hang them. Um, I'm just going to glue them on. So I'm just going to attach that with hot glue, nice and thick material. I can definitely do that. Again, you're going to get a little bit of um, shedding on those from cutting them. Now, I wanted to give them coastal touch as well. So again, I'm going to use one of those craft board sea creatures. This time, I thought maybe like a jumping dolphin would be cute. And it kind of looks cute in the brown, but I kind of wanted to keep with the blue and the white theme that I was doing for the little stocking hats and the ice skates. And I'm going to go ahead and paint it white with a makeup sponge. Again, being very careful that I don't get it too wet because I don't want that cardboard to fall apart. These are more fragile than I remember them being. And I'm only going to do one. I'm only going to do one for the little skate that's on top. Like it's kind of on the outside of the skate. And I'm just going to attach that with a little bit of hot glue. Super cute. I've had this for a while. I don't know why I haven't been using them very much. Okay, so now we can start putting this together. I'm going to attach it to the little galvanized metal sign with hot glue along the top of the skate. So I'm going to put glue just there on that top part and glue that to like one of the parts of the metal that's sticking up there so it'll catch it. And then we're going to kind of stagger the second one on top a little bit. Again, just gluing this top part. I tried gluing them to each other there at the bottom. Didn't really work too much because um, they have different sizes. So I'm going to add more hot glue here to the top to make sure this stays on. I love it. I think it's looking super cute. Again, I'm going to use some of that ribbon from the Dollar Tree. Um, this is the one that kind of looks like fishnet. And I just had some extra pieces of that. I'm just going to tie that around the top. To kind of give the appearance of a little fishnet hanging down. Had a little bit of free space over here and I thought this would make a cute little bow. And then I thought seashells. So I'm going to use some of these little tiny seashells that you get in the little clear glass bottles from the Dollar Tree. And we are just going to glue some on here to give some more coastal beachy touches to this DIY. I think this turned out really sweet and cute and it looks so good with the little stocking hats. So I'm just picking out different styles of seashells, kind of in the same color scheme, and gluing them on there. Now, I didn't do laces, so I'm going to use some of this baker's twine or this twine from the hardware section at the Dollar Tree. And I'm just going to do a bow. I thought about doing laces, but at this point, I thought it was going to be too much trouble. So I'm just going to do a bow for the top of one of the skates, just the one that's on top. Just add a little fun, and I just glued that to the top where the laces would be laced up. And this is how it turned out. I think it's super cute. I love the fuzzy fabrics and all the different textures and materials. And then I think it's really cute for winter. And again, the, all of these winter DIYs, you can leave up all winter. They are not just specific for Christmas. Okay, it's our last DIY. This one I thought, let it snow. We can remake this. I'm going to use some of these me new galvanized metal snowmen stakes. I just found those at the Dollar Tree the other day. They got them in kind of late, I think. And I think we can make this a Julie approved project. No, let it snow. This isn't going to work. So I'm just going to use different shades of blue and I am just painting over that. No rhyme, no reason. 
I probably should have texturized it a little bit with something to cover up the glitter from the scarf and the hat because I was having trouble covering that. I just kept doing different layers of blue just to kind of make it look like the ocean and the sky. Really no rhyme or reason. I was just trying to cover all of that up that was on there before. Kind of do a little bit of a horizon line if we can. Um, and again, you can still kind of see the texture of the glitter, but once we decorate it, I think it's going to be okay. Now for the bottom part, we don't want snow, no way. So we're going to do sand. <laughs> so I'm going to do a nice a thick layer of school glue, kind of in a wavy pattern here at the bottom. And then some of this white sand from the Dollar Tree. It's nice and got a little bit of sparkle in there too. And we're going to replace the snow with sand. This is going to be a coastal beach approved snow globe. <laughs> but I, I did like the shape. That's why I started with the sign. Now to get the sand to stick, I'm going to use some of the spray adhesive from the Dollar Tree and glue that down and then some of the sand that fell off i'm going to do a second layer of sand so that you can't see through it and again a little bit more of that spray glue to make sure that everything stays put that really works really well for sand projects for me aren't these cute they had um lots of different ones too and i got some new like galvanized metal christmas trees and different stuff like that they just got them in at my one of my big dollar trees i've never seen them before now the stake on the back was really on there it wasn't like easy to pop off like with your hand like some of them that i've seen so i'm just going to use some pliers and kind of work that back and forth until i have two little galvanized metal snowmen i thought these would be really cute to decorate and replacing that big one that was in there with maybe two smaller ones that's going to go i think the galvanized metal goes well with the coastal vibe and it's going to kind of coordinate with that last diy that we just did where we did the galvanized metal sign and i'm just going to attach both of those to our snow globe sign with lots of hot glue Anytime you glue to the sand, you have to use a little bit more hot glue, but I'm only gluing the bottom parts of those to the sand. Then I thought we should have some sea creatures out there. So I'm gonna use some of these little shore living dolphins from the Dollar Tree that they had um, this summer. And I'm gonna take two of the little dolphins jumping and just painting those white, again, with a makeup sponge. You could always use the little dolphins from the Crafter Square, the little craft board ones that we've been using as well if you don't have any of these. But I thought a few dolphins jumping out of the water from behind the snowmen would be really cute. So I'm just gonna attach both of those with a little dot of hot glue. Now to border out the frame, I thought some of this white nautical rope from the Dollar Tree would be really cute just for the border around the snow globe. So I'm just gonna use it as is, and we're gonna start gluing that on there. I'm gonna go ahead and put some twine back on there for a hanger while I can, um, because this is probably gonna glue that over there. I kind of tied it too long, so I'm gonna tie it a little bit shorter, but this could all be, it would be a really cute standing project as well if you don't wanna hang it. And I'm gonna start right here at the bottom and I'm gonna start hot gluing that rope frame all around our snow globe. I think this really ties it in and it makes the project look a lot more thick than the thin Dollar Tree sign. I always hate how thin the signs are. I always want my DIYs to be a little bit more substantial. I'm gonna cut it off when I get to the bottom here and glue that down. Now, the only problem is it says, let it snow. So <laughs> we're gonna replace that with some of this craft wood from the Dollar Tree. It's about 18 inches long. So we're gonna cut it in half. We're gonna have two nine inch pieces of this rather thick craft wood from the Dollar Tree. And it's gonna be a nice thickness. It's gonna be a, the same thickness as the rope. It's gonna make this look really nice. So we're gonna kind of pair those up side by side there at the bottom. The only problem is they're a little bit too um, skinny. So I'm gonna cut off the little sides where it kind of flares out on that let it, flow, let it snow sign. I tried with scissors, but it was a little too thick. So I'm just using a cutting blade from the hardware section at the Dollar Tree and a Dollar Tree cutting mat. 
And we're just going to cut that down. Doesn't have to be perfect. You're not going to be able to see it. And now we can attach these little wood pieces to the bottom to create a new sign for our little coastal beachy snow globe. Just going to glue that down to the let it snow with hot glue. I use the Gorilla Glue hot glue. I know some of you guys were asking. I get it at Amazon or Walmart. It's in my Amazon shop. I really love it. It works great for wood projects. Now I want it to look kind of coastal and distressed. And so I'm going to use some ivory acrylic and a chunky brush from the Dollar Tree. And just working in one direction, we are going to distress this wood, make it look nice and coastal. I want some of the raw wood to show through, but I also want a nice ivory background for our sign. Kind of distressing on the sides and the bottom as well. Now I want to spell out a new word. I don't want no snow, so... I'm going to use some of these galvanized metal letters from the Dollar Tree. You have to be careful when you buy these. You only get half the alphabet, as you can see. Um, like this one is N through Z. And you get one of each letter. I thought we could put like a fun saying. I'm going to do a snow-free zone. I thought that would be funny. Just trying to find enough E's. And luckily, I had enough. Now... These are kind of small, these letters, and so my regular hot glue gun gives a little bit too much hot glue. So I heated up my fine detail hot glue gun, um, and I am just going to glue those all on. Trying to not get any hot glue anywhere it shouldn't be, but it's inevitable. <laughs> and we're going to do snow free up here on the top board, and then zone here on the bottom. I think that ties in really nicely with the galvanized metal snowmen and it completes this little snow free zone snow globe. I think it's a fun take on a snow globe sign. And again, this would be a really pretty um, sign standing up. I haven't decided which way I'm going to use it. And then I thought, oh my gosh, I didn't put any sand shells or seashells on there. So I'm going to use one of these little tiny starfish that I get on Amazon. They're always listed in my Amazon shop below. Gonna glue that on with some hot glue. And again, when you're gluing to the sand, you gotta use a lot of hot glue because um, you kind of have to get down all the way to the sign. If you glue it just to the sand itself, um, it's gonna fall right off. So you kind of have to put lots of hot glue on there and then push it really hard down into the sand. I'm just gonna do three. I think that's plenty. And there is our final project. And this is how it turned out. Our little snow-free zone snow globe. I think it's really fun. What do you think? I really hope you enjoyed today's coastal winter Dollar Tree DIYs here on my channel. If you did, be sure to hit that like button. Comment your favorite coastal winter DIY below. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. All right, thanks for watching. Enjoy the final reveal. Hold up, I am on my way. I'm in motion. Let's go to the ocean. Yeah, let's go outside. We can hang out on the beach without freezing. Yeah, isn't that amazing? In Christmas time. We'll be chilling and having a good, good time. Just come in the visit No, he wouldn't miss this In Christmas times
trying to hang in there and keep this YouTube content coming out for you guys. And I want to give a huge thank you to the following Crafty Beach Bums for supporting my channel. Thank you so much to Coastal Couple, Pamela Bergeron, I Am Mojo Jojo, Melinda Elizabeth, Jamie Cho, Susan Edmonds, Sandra Ray, Carrie R, Tracy Knight, Vernon Noctigal, Nancy Wunner, Julie Miller, Jan Zalata, Tammy Coates, Janae Farrington, Pamelia Wren, Whitney Harrison, Maria Grace, Butterfly Mama, Donna Schreiner, and Tina Kane. Thank you so much for supporting my channel as a Crafty Beach Bum member. If you would like to join the fun, all you have to do is hit the join button under my video. It's $4.99 a month and you can cancel anytime. And remember, you're going to get early ad-free access to my videos. Now, if you've enjoyed today's DIYs and you would like to watch more Crafty Beach, YouTube thinks that you might enjoy this video right here. Thanks for watching and happy winter.